I think Toyota is by far in the best shape of any automaker on earth regarding preparedness for the future. Uh, we've put many, many powerful batteries. Executives from rival firms sat motionless, their confidence evaporating. What Toyota revealed that day was not a mere concept, not a distant vision, but a working machine that shattered expectations. In a hall heavy with silence, a screen lit up with numbers no one believed possible. 1,000 miles, five minutes, fireproof, affordable, clean. The air itself seemed to tighten as the truth settled in. This wasn't just progress. It was disruption arriving without warning, a quiet declaration that the world had shifted and nothing could return to what it was. The unthinkable numbers. At first, the figures sounded impossible. A car traveling 1,000 miles on one charge. A battery filling from empty to full in just five minutes. These were not forecasts or marketing spin. They were tested, verified, and presented for all to see. For years, lithium had been the barrier. Advances came in small steps. A little more range here, a slightly faster charge there. Nothing close to this. What made the moment even more striking was the calm delivery. No swelling music, no flashing graphics. Only numbers on a screen, each one redrawing the boundaries of electric power. Veterans in the industry muttered that it couldn't be true. Yet Toyota brought a functioning prototype, confirmed by independent labs. This wasn't vaporware, it was tangible. And if real, it meant the very foundation of electric vehicles had just been ripped away from competitors. The chemistry that changes everything. At the heart of Toyota's leap was a change in chemistry. Lithium had long shouldered the load of modern batteries, but its design held natural limits. Each ion carried only one electron, a sliver of energy. Aluminum behaved differently. Each ion carried three. That meant more energy, more motion, more capacity in the same volume. The breakthrough wasn't only the metal itself, but its pairing with a graphene-based cathode. This structure let aluminum ions move quickly with almost no resistance. The heat that plagued lithium cells never appeared. No swelling, no surging, no risk of runaway flames. To prove it, Toyota's engineers tortured the cells in ways no car battery should survive. They froze them solid, then blasted them with heat. They crushed, pierced, and short-circuited them. Nothing burned, not a single spark. What emerged wasn't just a stronger battery. It was a design that seemed immune to old dangers. Safety, speed, and strength unified in one system. A silent message to lithium. What startled observers most was not just what Toyota revealed, but what they avoided saying. The word lithium never appeared, not once. It was as though the old standard had already been erased, not worth mentioning. For companies that poured billions into lithium supply chains, the silence was louder than any boast. Mining contracts, extraction projects, and factory plans suddenly looked fragile. Years of investment were tied to a resource concentrated in unstable corners of the world. Salt flats in South America, mines in Australia, cobalt from Congo. Every deal carried risk, politics and shadows. Aluminum bore none of those burdens. It was abundant, inexpensive, and already embedded in global trade. Toyota's choice was not only a technical victory, it was a break from the bottlenecks that shaped the electric era. In one move, they proved lithium's reign was never permanent. It had been a stopgap, and its time was expiring. Oil's last stronghold shattered. For decades, gasoline's final defense was convenience. 
Drivers could travel farther and refuel in minutes, while EV owners waited and worried. Range anxiety was oil's shield, the argument that kept it alive. But Toyota's announcement smashed that defense in two. A thousand miles per charge meant no daily worries. A five-minute refill meant no waiting at all. Picture pulling into a station, plugging in, and leaving before your drink cools. That simple moment erases the only advantage combustion engines retained. However efficient, a gas tank cannot rival a battery that travels farther, charges faster, and carries no fire risk. Analysts knew exactly what it meant. Oil demand had always seemed untouchable. Now forecasts began to shrink. Millions of barrels a day could vanish as households and fleets abandoned pumps. This was not a gradual decline. It was the first true threat of collapse. The fortress had cracked, and the timing was merciless. Tesla, BYD, and the scramble. The tremors didn't stop in Tokyo. Within hours, boardrooms in California and Shenzhen were in turmoil. At Tesla, insiders whispered about an emergency project, a frantic sprint to develop aluminum cells, Engineers were reassigned overnight. The urgency was unmistakable. If Toyota's claims were accurate, Tesla's crown was in jeopardy. In China, BYD and Cattle faced their own reckoning. Their dominance in the lithium supply chain had been their greatest strength. Mines, contracts, and factories all centered around it. But aluminum rewrote the game. If it scaled, their edge dissolved. Executives huddled in long, tense meetings, scouring patents, partnerships, and strategies to slow the wave. Governments felt the shock as well. Programs once shelved were revived. Laboratories in the US and Europe reopened research on aluminum chemistries. But while they scrambled to react, Toyota had already acted. And in this race, being first could mean survival. The charging infrastructure shocked. The breakthrough carried a new challenge, speed. Today's charging networks were designed for lithium, built around limits that now seemed archaic. Superchargers capped at 350 kilowatts, once impressive, suddenly looked weak. Toyota's batteries demanded more, much more. Without it, their potential would be wasted. In Japan, the solution appeared first. Quiet test stations emerged along highways, armed with one megawatt chargers. Cars arrived, filled, and left within minutes. No lines, no overheating, no delay. It felt as natural as pumping fuel, only cleaner. California soon followed, with permits filed for megawatt hubs powered by solar and grid links. Fuel chains and convenience stores considered retrofitting locations unwilling to be left behind. The message was undeniable. Charging networks had to evolve or disappear. The trickle of yesterday's EV stations could not withstand the flood aluminum required. A new age of energy delivery had already begun. Economics and affordability. Cost had always been the quiet obstacle to adoption. Electric cars promised a brighter future, but their batteries kept prices high. Lithium packs often represented half the cost of a vehicle. Even with subsidies, breaking below $100 per kilowatt hour was difficult. Aluminum changes the balance entirely. The metal is common, mined across dozens of nations and already central to global industry. No rare additives, no expensive treatments required. Toyota's process stripped away many of lithium's hidden expenses. Analysts predicted production could fall below $80 per kilowatt hour in just a few years. That shift opened the door to affordable EVS for ordinary buyers. Imagine a family car priced under $25,000 with a range beyond even luxury models. And with almost no degradation, the battery could last decades without replacement. Suddenly, buying an EV wasn't a compromise. It was the practical, 
obvious choice for nearly everyone. Environmental reckoning. The promise of electric cars had always been wrapped in green language. Clean energy. Sustainable futures. But behind the slogans, the truth was harsher. Lithium carried scars. Desert lakes drained. Fragile ecosystems broken. Villages left without water. In the Congo, cobalt mining exposed something darker. Children working in dangerous pits. Families choking on toxic dust. Profits fueling conflict. Every EV carried that hidden cost, buried under its polished image. Aluminum bore none of that weight. It was plentiful, sourced in over 60 nations, and already integrated into trade systems. Most importantly, it could be recycled at astonishing rates. More than 90% of the material could be recovered endlessly, without losing quality. Recycling required little energy and left almost no waste. For the first time, performance aligned with ethics. Toyota's vision reached beyond automobiles. They revealed a modular energy block, compact enough to power a home yet strong enough to run microgrids. Safe, stackable, and fire resistant, these units could stabilize renewable power in ways lithium never managed. Communities powered by sun and wind could finally store energy without fear of decay or breakdown. The ripples spread even further. Aviation companies studied aluminum ions as a gateway to electric flight. Militaries tested them for drones and field gear. Tech firms imagined phones that charged in seconds and laptops lasting weeks. What began as an automotive shift had become something larger. It was not just about transport anymore. It was about redrawing the entire energy map. Cleaner, safer, and freed from compromise. What unfolded in that quiet hall was more than a product reveal. It was a turning point, a declaration that the rules had changed. For decades, the future had seemed chained to lithium, with oil still holding power. Then, in moments, Toyota revealed another road, faster, safer, cleaner. Competitors were left chasing shadows, investors shaken, governments reconsidering strategies. The old world burned with fire and fuel. The new one may run on aluminum, silent, steady, unshakable. And as the industry scrambles, one fact is certain. The fuse has been lit, and the countdown has already begun.